Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Manual Gearbox, and we're back with uh, uh, DCS World. It's been a long time since I've up uploaded a video on YouTube. Kind of like took a break from that. Uh, wasn't getting anywhere, so now I'm, I'm back again. I'm doing this for fun. And uh, today we are in the Through the Inferno server. This is a multiplayer server. Uh, I'm flying the MiG-21. I'm taking off from Mykop Kanskaya Air Base. Uh, and today we're going to be doing an anti-shipping mission. It's currently uh, early in the morning. It is still dark outside. And uh, we do not have any uh, night vision equipment. You know, anything of that nature. So we're just going to be using our sensors from inside the cockpit and our Mike 1 eyeball. I mean, hopefully we'll be able to see something. Uh, the, the targets are here on Quadrant FH-10. I'm going to be using this NDB here as a guidance. I'm going to take off. I'm going to head in this direction, intercept the NDB. And from there, we can turn to the left on a heading of 146 for 182 kilometers. We're also going to be using the Sochi uh, Air Base. Let's see here as a distance indicator. Yeah, 115 kilometers. So we got to keep that in mind. So for the time being, we're going to be using this primarily. Uh, like I said, it's inside this quadrant, but they could be anywhere. It could be here, here, there. We're aiming for the middle of it. So we don't know what type of targets they are. Maybe they're cargo ships or warships. We don't know. But we're going to have to find out the hard way. So let's get back into the cockpit. As you can see, it's totally dark outside. So let's uh, load out. I go for my favorite uh, skin, which is the Yugoslav Air Force. Since it's a long distance mission, we're going to be using some external fuel tanks. Three of them. And we're going to be using the Grom missile, which is actually an anti shipping missile. I was reading about that. It can be used for several other applications, but uh, it's primarily designed for anti shipping. As you can see here as well, the total weight. We're 145 kilograms above the maximum takeoff weight, so we're going to reduce the internal fuel to 93%, and this puts us down 15 kilograms below the maximum takeoff weight. Okay, so. Request refueling. Let's. Uh, Request copy. rearming. Copy. I think the uh, radio channel for my cop is 11. And here, we're going to set up number six, channel six for navigation. That's the Sochi airfield. Uh, in, in VOR. And here on landing, we're just going to keep it at five, which is this airfield here, mic up. Okay, so while re they're rearming and refueling, let's get this baby running. Talk to the tower. Okay, so let's... Konskaya, Chevy, 1-1, one, one. request startup. Rearming complete. Chevy, 1-1, one, one. Konskaya, cleared for startup. Okay. Usually when I'm doing this, I always connect the ground power first. But uh, today we're not going to do that. We're going to use the internal battery. Here we have 4,200 liters of fuel. Which is enough to get us to the target and back. Hopefully in one piece. Yeah, attacking warships with the MiG-21 is actually the same technique that the Argentinians used during the Falklands War against the British. You approach low, you wait until the last moment, and you use your missiles or, or bombs in case of Argentina. Okay. Ok, 
Okay, so let's see here. This thing, let's set the radio altimeter to 50 meters. What else am I missing? F flaps. This thing is still turning. Okay, so let's just align that. Okay, there we go. Now let's set the uh, the course to one four six. Okay, so I think that should be that should be just about right. Okay. So now let's uh, arm the missiles. Sure, this is working. Yeah, it is. Okay, let's just bring down the brightness on the targeting net just slightly. There we go. Okay, so taxing lights on. What else am I missing? There's always that that feeling that you're missing something, even though you've done it all correctly. There's always that thought in the back of your mind. Okay, yeah, so we're technically just ready to go. Oh, the pitot tube. Okay. Let's uh, request taxi to runway. Chevy, one, one. Request taxi to runway. Oh. That was missing as well. Four. Okay. Great check. Okay. Yep. Totally dark. That, uh, signal there we're getting from the radar warning receiver that's from the uh, S300 that's behind us can't see it from here say 25 826 and for some reason it's still still dark Brake on. We set the brakes and full throttle just to make sure the engine is responding correctly. And it is, so we engage the afterburner, release the brakes.
quite heavy, so the aircraft is struggling to gain airspeed. Also, the takeoff roll was a little bit longer than usual. Usually, you rotate at 250 kilometers. On this occasion, we waited until 300. We get a little bit more airspeed through the wings. We're also going to be climbing to 2,500 meters. And then we'll intercept the NDB. I feel like this mission is going to be useless. I mean, we look at this, we can't see anything. We don't have any sensors to detect the warships. So, not no night vision goggles or anything, so it further complicates the situation. Okay, so we're now we're parallel to the runway. Continue to climb. Runway should be there somewhere. it up. Okay, so we're not too far away from it. Turn to the left slightly. And we still continue to climb and we try to intercept the NDV. Receiving a very weak uh, signal, that's why the, uh, the the needle is bobbing left and right. One four six. That's our current objective. Every reach reached 2,500 meters, we're going to continue to climb slightly because whenever you engage the SAU, the automatic pilot, the nose of the aircraft tends to drop about 150 meters. Okay, we're almost there. And we engage the SAU. There we go. We drop the nose drops. We're going to pick up some airspeed. From Michael Bear Base. There we are, 2,500 meters. Flying straight towards the NDB. And we're going to continue to accelerate until this very narrow needle here, that's the true airspeed indicator, reaches 700, and then we'll just maintain it at that speed. That's our economy speed 650 to 700 kilometers per hour. Yields the best mileage on this aircraft. Okay, so look, it's just beginning to, uh, to get bright on this side here. That's east. So, yeah, it's beginning to get. You know, it's, morning is approaching, and uh, sh hopefully by the time we get to the target, it'll be bright enough where we can see the targets visually. And here is this ridge line. Once we get crossed over this ridge line, we'll arm the aircraft. In fact, let me just cock the, uh, the cannon there. Okay, so we're past 100 kilometers per hour. Let's just drop the uh, let's throttle slightly. 90%.
Oh yeah. Scary, isn't it? I'm gonna fly. Dark, total darkness, can't see anything. You gotta rely on your instruments at all times. Yeah. Okay, we're 96, 95 kilometers away from Sochi Airfield. There's the ridge line. Crossed over that, we'll, we'll arm the aircraft, arm the uh, weapons. Okay, fuel, we still got enough. We still got fuel in the external fuel tanks. Okay, so we got two radar emissions coming from behind us. One is off to the uh, uh, rear left uh, quarter panel, and there's another one straight behind us. Can't see, can't see anything here. Okay, so the NDB is now off to the, off to the right of us. Try to intercept that. So we're over the ridge line. Let's arm the aircraft. Gun missiles. Still have a safety cap on my joystick. It's a physical safety cap. And also remove the safety cap from the chaff flare dispensers. And I uh, got that on safe on the uh, under my control my control stick. Once we get close to the target. Okay, so now everything's quiet, no more radar emissions. Every time I look outside the window to the left, this rail over here looks like a road when it's dark. You see that? I always get confused. I always think like I'm following some road or something. Okay, so the, now the RMI needle is starting to move slightly, which means we're about to overfly it. It's close to the uh, to the shoreline over here. And we got to turn 145 degrees. And once we do that, we're also going to drop altitude maybe to 1,000 meters, 500 meters. indicator and the RMI needle. Okay, overshot slightly, no biggie. 
We're also going to be dropping some altitude. Okay, we're just waiting to align those two needles together. There we are. Okay, we turn. heading towards the east so that should be able to help us out to locate any uh, naval targets Hopefully by the time we get there, uh, it will be bright enough to see the ships, otherwise this whole mission is useless. Once we get the autopilot on, I'm going to check the map to see if I'm getting the coordinates right. Okay, here we go. Let's see here. Okay, so now we're following the uh, 146 radio from the NDB. Let's also check to see if I got the uh, quadrant right. We type dash intel. And here we have it. FH-10, Blue 4 Naval Units, a grid FH-10. There we are. Okay, so we're good. Okay, so we're just going to keep going. Usually this types of, these types, uh, types of missions uh, takes about maybe, I don't know, an hour or more. There's a ship there and there's also the oil platforms. That's not a, a concern to us. Oh, one thing I need to uh, check out with AWACS, see if we've got any hostiles in the area. Dark Star, request Chevy picture. 1 1, request picture. Chevy 1 1. Dark Star, two groups. First group at Bullseye 223 480 at 11,000. Additional group at Bulls 187 440 at 11,000. Okay, 223 for 80. Okay, around here. Okay, so they're going to be close. This is the, uh, I'm not sure if they're flanking or coming towards us or, or away from us, but uh, this is our most likely, uh, most uh, potential threat right here. So we got to keep a close eye on the radar warning receiver. Get some more airspeed. Seven, four, one hundred fifty at twenty two thousand flanking. One one seven, one hundred and fifty at twenty two thousand feet flanking. Okay. Okay, so we're good. 
Let's just check to see if the uh, okay we got radar radar is working. Kilometers, 20 to 2,500 feet and flanking. Okay, so they're not coming towards us. Okay, let's drop altitude here. Let's go down to 500 meters. Sidetech X45 control stick. It was a gift from a friend of mine a long time ago. That was back in 2003. And uh, yeah, it's getting old. I'm, I'm not sure if I'm going to change, I'm going to swap it for anything else. For the time being, I'm, I, I am considering buying the VKB a control stick. I think that's the most the complete control stick I've seen so far. It's also the uh, Thrustmaster Warthog, but so far this uh, SciTech X45, everything works. I mean, every single button works. It's old. I mean, like I said, it's old, but everything works. So I'm not sure if I want to spend money on a new one. Time will tell. Getting any readings from uh, Sochi VOR? We're too low, we're too far away, so we're gonna have to eyeball it. It's a lonely affair being a fighter pilot. I mean, sometimes you get a wingman and everything, but in the end, it's only you, all by your lonesome inside a cockpit. Especially having to do dangerous work like hunting warships. Chevy one one, Dark Star, Bra one one zero four one hundred twenty at twenty two thousand flanking. Okay, those are no. Those aren't much of a threat. Chevy one one. Darkstar, bra, 138, 450 oh. at 8,000 knots. Oh boy, that's, that's just dead ahead of us. 50 kilometers and 8,000 feet. And it's hot, it's coming this way. Oh man, it's nerve wracking. I'm not sure what to do. Should I abort? Only air defense. Darkstar, bra, one zero two four one hundred at eleven thousand cold. Okay. The only air defense that I got is the is the cannon. Still no sign of any ships. Very 
radar warning receiver is quiet, so that aircraft probably is not pointing its radar towards me. Uh oh. Getting radar warning receivers coming from this direction. Oh, I see him. Okay, I see him. Okay, let's uh, drop down. I see a ship. There they are. Not sure exactly what that is. Can go down. You gotta remain below 20 meters if you want to break a radar lock from a warship. Accelerate and uh, Chevy one one Dark Star merged. Dark Star merged with what? I think that's a cargo ship, and these two over here are the warships. I'm gonna go for the safe one. Searching for any potential air threats. Okay, radar activated. Yeah, this is a cargo ship. Fire missiles can be targeted. quick. Oh, there it is. Man, my heart is pounding. And we'll get out the same way we came in. That's a terrible idea, but it's the only, uh, it's the only reference I got for the moment. So that was a good, that was a good one. Chevy 
Okay, so now I think we're safe, quote unquote. Still being, still got a warning uh, from behind us, radar, radar warning. Could be the ships. So let's see here. Let's check the map. This is Sochi Airfield. One three five eight. Okay, so let's dial that in. Three five. Oh no, that's not it. Three five. This is a little bit harder to do. Direction 11,000 feet, I'm not seeing anything. I clicked on something when I was trying to dial the uh, the radio here. It was this thing radar stream magnetic reset, whatever that is. to check to see if there's any uh any threats there's the sun coming out oh man that looks beautiful oh man that was freaking awesome wasn't it That was done in my ranch. I think there was two warships and a cargo ship, and I took out the cargo ship. Oh yeah. So maybe that was the uh, the juicy target. Who knows what they were carrying inside that ship? Ammunition. Okay, so we're getting close to the, uh, the coastline here. There's the, uh, okay, let's gain some altitude to intercept, to uh, get radio signals from the uh, VOR.
and we keep climbing until we reach 2,500 meters just to make it across that ridge line there. DCS World just keeps getting better and better, man. That's one hell of a game we got. New modules coming in. I already pre purchased the F 14. Chevy 1 1, Dark Star, Bra 1 1 6, Fork 130, at 22,000, flanking. got enough fuel, we got like 2200 liters of fuel, so that should be more than enough to get us back home. Okay, autopilot engaged, have a drink. Share adjustment as well. Keep turning. Just a reference that we're using. Slightly off the radio, so it's no big deal. Okay, let's turn this off. The flashlight, that is. Now let's uh, intercept the mic up uh, VOR. Might be too, uh, maybe too low and too far away for the radio to intercept it. But to my surprise, it isn't. It's just right up in front of us, 123 kilometers away. Ooh. Talk about perfection here, man. So now we need to prepare for landing. Uh, landing is actually uh, heading three zero three seven. Okay, so it should be there three seven. And once we cross the ridge line, we can uh, put the aircraft back on safe should be in range now of the S-300, which should be providing us some cover in case somebody wants to jump on us. Oh man, what a mission. OK, 
Okay, I think we're safe now, so let's turn the radar, the, uh, the gun side off, the missiles, and the gun. You can press on the trigger now. And we're not getting any, any response. Doing some practice with these anti shipping Heavy missiles one, and uh, one, two, one, two, five. Four, one hundred fifty at twenty two thousand flanking. Okay, yeah, like I was saying, uh, I've been doing some practice and I've been using the uh, jamming pod from that comes with the MiG 21, but I found it to be totally useless. I'm not sure if it's even modeled or if it's actually so obsolete now that uh, can't even use it against modern technology. Oh, I think I saw something over here. just to make it over this uh, small bridge in front of us. We're 90 kilometers away. airspeed will also deploy the uh, landing lights as well. trail or something. Okay, let's reduce airspeed and drop altitude. We're only 54 kilometers away from the uh, from the airfield, and I think there's red smoke over here. I'm not sure if that's the. Uh, yep, might be it. It's the airfield, right where that. Red smoke stack is located. Okay, so I'm not going to fly directly towards this. I'm going to fly slightly away from it. And wait until the two needles needles align.
Okay, let's go for landing. Trust on our instruments here. Okay, we're about to align with the. Uh... Oh, I see it. Okay, so landing gear. Light slope. Flaps one. Perhaps two. Light slope. Okay, so we made it back in one piece. We didn't get even shot at. Okay. Well, 
Welcome back to Michael. And the sun is out. I'm gonna park exactly where we started the aircraft. We don't need that stuff anymore. Man, what a beautiful aircraft, the MiG-21. Very capable, despite the fact that it's obsolete as hell. And yet, still used around the world for a very good reason. And if you even uh, modernize this avionics, it becomes even more capable. alive in one piece not even getting shot at now that's efficiency right there I'm not bragging or anything but you know feels great when you do a mission like this and return back mission accomplished and yeah hope you guys enjoy the video uh, I'll be trying to upload a little bit more frequently now like I said I mean real life uh, issues have kept me away from uh, I'm uploading more videos, but uh, yeah, I'll be, uh, I'll be in touch, and uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.